please join me in welcoming Jazz Koff, Aiden Gangai, Agathea Vistas-Varn, Ella Lyons, Mia Lemon, and Ben Schneider, our Jazz Combo. example of the great work that is done here all year and throughout your academic career but also in no uh, small part due to your effort also so please join me in thanking them once again for such
Now, if you can possibly fall back to sleep, you have a little bit more time on your last day. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Once again, welcome back to all of you. Please join me in welcoming our Board of Education, Alumni Association Leader Mary Jane Link, and Ben Levy, BHS Executive Council President. Thank you all for being here. It is so great to see everyone, uh, especially this year, to be frank. Your warm support, your enthusiasm, your perseverance, and your commitment to what we do and to this district is always inspirational, so thank you. We miss you a great deal in your partnership when you're not here. It's wonderful to welcome you back. And I think it's important to start this morning with some thank yous. There are many people that work incredibly hard to prepare for our opening and to support the instructional work that is done with students each day. And it is dangerous to start identifying one group or another. I recognize that. But there's a particular group that I think we should pay special attention to this morning. Because here in the midst of a capital project, a lot of great work done. Perhaps you've seen the turf. There's a chiller project. We installed an outhouse on the roof at the high school. <laughs> Due to the roof work, I'm hoping that's going to come down. I'm assuming it is. But there are a group of people that have worked so hard and around that work and they always do. In fact, many of our new staff members coming from other places have commented on the great work that our buildings and ground staff do each and every day. So I would uh, hope that when you get a chance, and I know you do this all the time, but you can continue to thank them for their work that sometimes is so seamless it goes unseen, but it definitely is not unnoticed. But this morning, if I could ask the buildings and ground staff all here this morning to please stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Certainly getting credit that they deserve. There are other support services that deserve some thanks as well. Please join me in our heartfelt thanks to clerical staff members throughout the district, business office staff, central office staff, data support, human resources, PPS office staff, technology, audiovisual, food service, and transportation staff. Those who are here now, but also when you get a chance, those who couldn't be here. This morning is the first time when we've had as many staff members throughout the district as possible here for the opening. So please join me in thanking them too. Thank you. I, I'd like to take a moment to personally specifically thank Lisa Hartman, Christopher Schneider, Mike Leener, Nicole Vandermeer, Eric Gruner, Dan Goldman and of course Kim Lanzafame for their help all of the time, but especially in preparation for today. I'd also like to thank our leadership team, Lou, Debbie, Carolyn, and our Board of Education for their work throughout the summer and throughout the year. I'm honored to be the member of a team and so blessed in life to work with such great colleagues each and every day. So thanks very much for me to them. It's also no secret that I'm incredibly proud of the work being done in our district and likely it's no secret that I'm exhaustingly proud of you, the people who are doing that work. So whether or not it sounds self-congratulatory, which has been suggested uh, sometimes by a community member, uh, when I say this to the community or not, I will not apologize for complimenting you or continuing to congratulate you for being who you are. I think you're pretty incredible, so I'll keep bragging about you and heralding your great work every chance I get. You've earned that and more. I'm also, though, very proud not just of the work being done, but how it gets done. Your work and your sense of community, of collaboration, of team, uh, the way you come together as a team to make this such a great experience for kids is pretty impressive as well. That teamwork is so important to who we are and to how we work. It's why things work really, really well here. So don't just take my word for it, though. Enjoy the perspectives of some of our students. Teachers can make you um, learn stuff, learn stuff, special stuff, learn stuff, do stuff, fun activities and stuff. Stuff so you're not just like sitting there by yourself. Other stuff, stuff you get to do, stuff that we probably didn't know before. Stuff like how, what was our first president, like Washington and the other ones. <laughs> yeah. And if you get a heart and have a boo-boo, they can give you a band aid. You can go to the doctor if you don't feel good. The sisters and the teachers help you too. They do kind of that stuff too. 
the coolest thing being at Council Rock is that you get to learn a lot and you also get to have fun. I really like Council Rock because we get to play a lot. I think Council Rock is a super school because I love the playgrounds. I like Council Rock because we have longer recess than other schools. I really like Council Rock because of lunch. Well, I think the coolest thing Council Rock is, uh, I think it's the nice uh, teachers. I really like Council Rock because the teachers are really nice. We have um, nice kids, we have nice teachers. All teachers are nice. Yeah, they're very nice. <laughs> I think most of it is all how the teachers teach and how they do it really funly. They're kind, they help us learn, they let us have extra recess because we're being good. They're very helpful for what they do with helping us learn and get the concept of things. I think they do a good job trying to get the kids to learn new things. Also, they are super, 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 super nice. Thank you for making learning be fun and not boring. I think what makes a great teacher is how the way they react. All of the, um, generosity that she puts in to um, make us do lots of fun activities. I would uh, thank every teacher because um, even if I don't know them, I bet they do, they really help uh, kids learn. And I think the new kids that will be coming here to be in kindergarten or moving from a different school to first grade, I think they're really gonna like it here. Thank you, Council Rock Primary School. Thank you, you Miss Family. Thank you, Mrs. Allen. Thank you, Mrs. Ulrich. Thank you, Mr. Tappen. And all the teachers that are in this school, because some Thank teachers, you. like when we were doing everything, they combined together and make it more fun. Yeah! And thank you for all you have done to us. We're going to miss you guys. And my Mrs. Yeah. Manolo. <laughs> <laughs>
All the teachers here are just really great. Yeah, they're all um, amazing. They're supportive. Mm -hmm. They meet everyone's academic needs and they re work really hard to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. They're always caring and then they like make you feel like mm -hmm. you're important. Yep, they plan great lessons and can help you individually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a student, it it really helps when you feel like you have a connection to your teacher for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just makes it funner in the classroom. I'd like to thank them so much. They've helped me along the way, and I don't know what I would do without them. Just keep doing what you're doing, because you're doing it right. We love you, teachers. Wait, do you love us? We like to thank all our fifth grade teachers through a dance. It's just been a great year this year, so I think I'll be I think I'll be ready to go into middle school and stuff. One of the things I like 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 like, like teachers who are like laid back. Teachers that really take time to help students. Someone who you can talk to if you need help. Someone who listens to you. Someone who's able to look at their students and think about their individual needs. Someone who does other learning types like hands on, not just like sitting there in a classroom doing nothing. Someone who puts their students first. Who teach you but also have a personal connection with you. I actually interact with you so you're not just by yourself. Be able to communicate with the kids and understand them and just really mesh. They'll do everything they can to help you be successful and funny. Teach things well but they're also strict at the same time. Helpful. Wanting the best for their students. Yeah, and the teachers are all pretty nice. I think, I think, I think, 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 I think a great teacher is someone who can, first of all, relate to their students. Someone who is there for you, um, is willing to help, is willing to listen. Very engaging and loves to talk to the students. Someone who cares about their students and not just the job and like getting mm -hmm. through it. A teacher should be a teacher. I think a lot of times teachers are a little bit underappreciated by their students. I think a great teacher is someone who's very enthusiastic about learning, you know, but not squash the students' dreams or anything like that. They take time to really help students with what they need to know, and they take time also just to get the to get to know them like outside of like just everyday learning. They invite discussion and they enjoy having that discussion. They recognize that children have ideas too and they can let those children explore those ideas and grow. Really allow the student to explore for their own and uh, really like learn it out, them, like figure out themselves rather than just show them what to do. Going out of their way a little bit, whether it's like checking in on, on students when they know that they might be stressed or going out of their way like academically having extra study sessions and extra support. I think especially in Brighton, I think most of the teachers are really good at teaching. Probably what makes a great teacher is just being connected with your students and really like engaging. Really excited to teach people about their material. Knowing how to engage an entire class instead of just lecturing for 45 minutes straight. I think the teachers have really helped me. There's people out there who like care about you, not just whether you're getting an A in the class. What makes a teacher stand out for me is that they really get students. A teacher that uh, puts him or herself in the student's shoes. Students, they don't always want to just take notes and just listen to people drone on. And Especially like senior year, like you know that you don't really want to do stuff and you're like kind of sluggish the whole year, but they like make sure to like stay on you and to keep working. Help us and push us to be the best that we can be. Throughout my schooling experience in the Brighton Central School District, most if not all the teachers have been really, you know, pushing me and helping me to uh, you know reach my academic potential. I think it's important that all of you know that um, we see the hard work that you guys put into our education and our growth throughout our years here. I just want to thank all of my teachers, all the administrators, all of the staff that's helped make Brighton so great because it wouldn't have been the same without all of them and I'm just really grateful. I don't think anybody says it better than our kids. And I asked some parents in the community as well, some of them 
among you here today, in fact, to share some advice. Just another strategy to embarrass my children as much as I possibly can when I send that message out. And uh, all sorts of different feedback uh, was received. One was relax. And you know, especially around the holidays and the winter time, it's going to be okay. That was from Charlie and really meant for me again this year. It's not for anybody else. Um, Emma just simply said, hmm, I don't know, have fun, which is she's the rainbow, rainbow and unicorn, everything in life in our house, so it's just a big smile. And of course, there's Peter. He really didn't have a piece of advice necessarily for all of you that pertains to him. It wasn't about giving less homework. In fact, he suggested more homework, but specifically for his brother, Charlie, if you can manage that. That's what he there were others too, and in a sign that they may be getting too old for this, many of them were really just revolving around have fun, relax, and less homework, not surprisingly. Um, and then there was a gem, don't wear hair ties as they are distracting to you or others. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that was. And another student remarked, just answer the kids' questions, which I'm pretty sure you already do, so there was that too. But I didn't uh, just spend time asking my kids for advice this summer. No, we spent a lot of time together. We love being able to take a break, reconnect as it were, and really bond. And then on June 29th or so, Betsy and the kids were ready to not be doing that with me at that point. Um, they're ready for some space. But really, uh, they're very excited too. We've been looking at colleges with Peter. He's asking a lot more questions about meal plans than his co-ops and things like that, which I suppose shouldn't be a big surprise. Um, interestingly, though, Charlie and Emma are on those visits, so Emma usually remarks something along the lines of, oh, Peter, that would be a good spot to take our girlfriend for a walk and hold hands with her, which is mortifying to Peter, only doubled up in the embarrassment by me mentioning it today. And that's like a wide open spot then for Charlie, because that conversation starter is like a less than zero on the one to 10 scale for Peter, and Charlie just jumps right in, then there's this opportunity. He's more than happy to expound on that topic. So needless to say, if you can picture that conversation, we are more than happy to be sending the three amigos back to you for the school year, like, like most parents. So that's a little bit about where my family's at, but what about our family here at school and, and where are we at as a group? And some of you are probably wondering at this point, where's he going with this and are we gonna move on from just his family talk? Yes, the blueprint, I'd like to start there. It's an important document, it's an important plan, it's an important part of what it represents and the guidance that it gives us in the district. It's developed collaboratively, accomplished collaboratively, and it certainly impacts us collectively. It's the bedrock of our strategic work in terms of our planning, in terms of our studying and digging deeper to continuously improve. However, much to I'm sure your disappointment, there are better times and places to dig further into that and the committees that you'll work on will do that. So we won't spend the morning going through that, but I did wanna make a few important points, particularly five essential elements I think going into this year for us to think of, and those are focus, Excellence, equity, team, plus connections. That's right, if you're a fan of Wheel of Fortune or keeping score at home, the first letters can easily be combined as a good old mnemonic device or the definition of a bad foot fungal condition, feet plus C. Yes, the father of two sweaty teenage boys had to come up with a foot condition to remember those five things as I'm going through them with you. I think though the most important aspect of this work by far is the plus C and thinking about connections. So let's listen to this for a moment and then talk about that. I have spent my entire life either at the schoolhouse, on the way to the schoolhouse, or talking about what happens in the schoolhouse. Both my parents were educators, my maternal grandparents were educators, and for the past 40 years, I've done the same thing. But one of the things that we never discuss or we rarely discuss is the value and importance of human connection. Relationships. James Comer says that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. George Washington Carver says all learning is understanding relationships. Everyone in this room has been affected by a teacher or an adult. For years, I have watched people teach, I have looked at the best and I've looked at some of the worst. A colleague said to me one time, they don't pay me to like the kids. They pay me to teach a lesson, the kids should learn it, I should teach it, they should learn it, case closed. Well, I said to her, 
You know, kids don't learn from people they don't like. <laughs> just a bunch of hooey. And I said to her, well, your year is going to be long and arduous, dear. <laughs> Needless to say, it was. Some people think that you can either have it in you to build a relationship or you don't. I think Stephen Covey had the right idea. He said you ought to just throw in a few simple things, like seeking first to understand as opposed to being understood. Simple things like apologizing. You ever thought about that? Tell a kid you're sorry, they're in shock. <laughs> I taught a lesson once on ratios. I'm not real good with math, but I was working on it. <laughs> and I got back and looked at that teacher edition. I taught the whole lesson wrong. <laughs> so I came back to class the next day and I said, look guys, I need to apologize. I taught the whole lesson wrong. I'm so sorry. They said, that's okay, Ms. Pearson, you were so excited, we just let you go. <laughs> Four years, I watched my mother take the time at recess to review, go on home visits in the afternoon, buy combs and brushes and peanut butter and crackers to put in her desk drawer for kids that needed to eat, and a washcloth and some soap for the kids who didn't smell so good. See, it's hard to teach kids who stink. <laughs> And kids can be cruel. And so she kept those things in her desk. And years later, after she retired, I watched some of those same kids come through and say to her, you know, Miss Walker, you made a difference in my life. You made it work for me. You made me feel like I was somebody when I knew at the bottom I wasn't. And I want you to just see what I've become. And when my mama died two years ago at 92, there were so many former students at her funeral, it brought tears to my eyes, not because she was gone, but because she left a legacy of relationships that could never disappear. I think Rita Pearson has it so right. So we're a room of 600 or so people with likely 800 or more opinions. Not, uh, and we may not agree with all of the strategies, and if you have the chance to see her, her whole TED Talk, she talks about a lot of different positive strategies she goes through. We might not agree with all those or all of her perspectives, but I think we can all agree on that importance of connections and the success that you have in developing those, and how much more successful kids are when you develop that human connection with them. This deep, deep interpersonal relationship we can form with each child. Not a number, not a group, not an African American child, not a white child, not an Asian child, but a child, another human being. And there are so many people here that are so good at that. All of the staff members here in attendance, which one of the many reasons why I'm glad so many of you are here today, because this extends to every single adult in this district that interacts with children. The act of teaching and learning is a very personal one that's passed down. Essentially the whole idea of somebody who knows something or figured it out or has experience with it, teaching another human being that same concept. It's a very human relationship that is required to make that happen and happen well. It requires two people in that moment to trust each other, one person to be willing to say that they don't know, and the other person to take a risk in explaining something. Again, requires a connection, a human connection between two people. We also know that without question, both from uh, research and from our experiences, that children are far more likely to be successful, to be happy, to be healthy when they have a connection with an adult, and that they're far less likely to succeed academically, socially, and in terms of their mental and physical health if they don't have that connection with at least one trusted adult. And anybody here can be that trusted adult. You're very, very good at this. That brings me to Fred Rogers. And if you haven't seen the documentary about him released this summer, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. Can't recommend it highly enough. Then again, I'm a child of Fred Rogers, so I might be a little bit addicted to the sweater and the sneakers and the whole nine yards. Pretty incredible guy. And he said, if you can only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never, dream, never even dream of, there is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. So please keep thinking about that. It is what has made Brighton Brighton and makes you who you are. So for so many years, you've been leaving kids and parents with something of yourself in every one of those interactions. It's so good when you do. I see it as a dad and as your colleague. I see it when I hear stories all summer long from my three kids, many of which I was sharing with people this morning, 
all, they talk about you all the time. Those little pieces that you leave with them are pretty special. So we're well aware also at this point, and it leads me to another aspect of this uh, feet plus C device, and that is equity. So a lot came up this summer, a lot happened. I think we're, many of us are aware of that and things that may have been posted online. First and foremost, please know this. Eric Morris and the summer school staff, Eric was the summer school principal, could not have done a better job in working with kids this summer and working through this particular issue. So I'd like to thank them for their work. But please also know this, we um, always, have always and will always respect varying perspectives on these issues and speak from the heart and with honesty. It's been quite a summer regarding the discussion, so let me acknowledge that fully. I received a lot of messages from community members all over the board on this, some very supportive of the work in the district, some defensive of their community, some very concerned, and some on the far ends of the spectrum saying we need to do more or we need to be doing less. And with one opinion that I'm struggling to find a lot of respect for, I was left a voicemail and somebody told me I could do things with diversity and equity that I did not know anatomically you could do with an idea. So there are people all over the board on this. <laughs> the same person suggested I am a communist, socialist, and a leftist, among other things. Be that as it may, I didn't think I was, but this person thinks I am. The world right now, though, the point is, is all over the place in this conversation. But we need to be in one place on it, and that is right here. Right here in that relationship with kids. Our connections our role in fostering equity, not because one group or another is demanding it or asking for something or making more noise than the other or pushing us to the far ends of a conversation, but because it's the right work to be doing. I was inspired by the final wishes of Senator John McCain, and I would like to share one of the comments that he wrote last week that was shared uh, following his passing. We weaken our greatness when we confuse our patriotism with tribal rivalries that have shown, sown resentment and hatred and violence in all corners of the globe. We weaken it when we hide behind walls rather than tear them down, when we doubt the power of our ideals rather than trust them to be the great force for change that they have always been. I believe he was calling us as a nation to come together, to break down barriers, and to be united in strengthening our bonds by finding commonality in our goals, our pride, our care for each other. And here's the thing, we believe deeply in this area of work. You have been breaking down those barriers for a long, long time. So please, please, please do not lose hope or desire or inspiration. Please take a minute to consider a video clip that to me sums up the importance of our work and what it means for us and some things we should be thinking about and the importance of this work going forward. Who said that? The lady at the store. That is not a compliment. Listen, it's an ugly, nasty word, and you are going to hear it. Nothing I can do about that. But you are not going to let that word hurt you. You hear me? There are some people who think you don't deserve the same privileges just because of what you look like. It's not fair. It's not. Remember, you can do anything they can. The difference is you gotta work twice as hard and be twice as smart. Come straight from medical practice. You got your ID? Alright. Kissing stuff. How's your review? We're good. We're good. Good. Yeah. You see? We're good. Okay. Good. Now, when you get pulled over, uh, I'm a good driver. Okay. Baby, don't worry. This is not about you getting a ticket. This is about you not coming home. I'm gonna be okay. Right? Okay. okay. It's not fair. But you keep showing up. You are not pretty for a black girl. You are beautiful, period. Okay? Don't ever forget that.
So for me personally, that video was a powerful reminder of how important this work is in our society. It's one that brought it home for me, which is why I wanted to share it. When I think about the conversations that we have at home with Charlie and Peter before they go anywhere, compared to the conversations that happen for some of the kids that they know and go to school with, they're very, very different. It just reminded me of how important this work is and how closing societal gaps that isolate and tear down rather than build up and strengthen, how important it is for us to be doing that work. So let's be clear, you're a staff that has embraced, embraced closing that equity gap for a long, long time. That's a real representation of how that is for many people in our communities. You have fought societal norms that create the moments in that video. Your work in this area last year and for a long time should be applauded, and it is by many. The results have been pretty incredible. But society has a long way to go, and we can and should play a role in that. So last year, you opened your hearts, you made yourselves vulnerable to explore implicit bias in new ways. Thank you, and please keep doing that. It's too important to not do that. Being honest brokers in this work, though, means that we say what we say will sometimes be inartful, sometimes be misread, sometimes not be perfect. However, our focus should not be on litigating that, defending it, or shouting louder than the other person. It should be on the very, very real pain that someone else feels and what we can do to consider their human experience, our own experience, and the equity that we should be providing. We are people in a relationship that need to connect, to feel, and to find a way forward together in hopes that that way forward is ever more inclusive and embracing for all. As late as last week, and I suspect this will continue today, some staff members have been trying to figure out a way forward when working on these issues or with students from a wide variety of backgrounds. So my answer goes back to connections and relationships, right back to the beginning of the first video clip. Forget about the nuance and the eggshells. Know that you will always, always, always be supported when you're developing caring, equitable, and positive relationships. The connection between two people knows nothing of skin color, faith, or difference. That's the place to achieve equity is in that relationship. The connection between two people is so, so important. It only knows care, concern, and collaboration if we really focus on the human being, the heart, and not all of the other aspects. We should learn more. We should be more culturally inclusive in our curriculum. We should think about implicit bias. And we should focus on relationships with individuals because that's what has the power to transcend everything else. So that brings me to focus. We have lots to talk about and lots of work to do in many areas. It's about all aspects of our work, though. Regarding equity, an important piece of feedback I received was that this concept should not just be the sole focus of our work, but rather a lens through which our other work can be viewed. And I think that's true. And I know that we won't please everyone in this conversation, not even close. So we need to focus on doing what is right, the right way for our community, in the right time frame for our entire school community. The focus needs to be on this work and the other priority areas. Your work in mental health support, safety, wellness, rigorous coursework, 21st century learning spaces, and technology is also so important to the work for all students each and every day. So let's continue to keep our eye on all of those balls, knowing again that at the end of the day, relationships and connections are essential to success across the board in every one of those areas. Now back to feet. How about the other two areas? Excellence and team. Here's the deal. We wouldn't have achieved excellence before or continue to achieve excellence if it wasn't for teams, the people in this room. Our schools are again ranked nationally and they far exceed our neighbors in many areas. All of our students are achieving, competing, and succeeding in their own ways and at a very high level because of the team in this room. Thank you for being such an incredible group of people and giving so much to our kids. And as I mentioned before and did recently with our new staff members, I always ask in interviews, why would we as a community, why would I as a dad want to trust you with our children? So let me say this as a dad. There is nobody more important to me than my kids. As, as you know, I talk about them probably too much to you, but there's no more important, nobody more important to me. So why you? Why should the centers of my universe and Betsy's be with you for this one moment of time, this opportunity that they can't get a do-over? Simply put, it's because of you. It's because of how you touch their lives the way you invest your time and your talent, your energy, because of each of you as a human being. That's why, that's why you, because of who you are. Your care, your kindness, your humor, your intellect, your very gifts as adults who do so much for children. 
You're the answer for parents, but more importantly for kids. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I have no doubt that this will again be our best year yet, and that it will be because of you and all that you do to connect with, inspire, push, and care deeply for each individual child. So thank you very much, and welcome back to school. Here's to you. We are very blessed here at Brighton to work so collaboratively with another very important part of this team, our Board of Education. They volunteer so much time, and they're always asking why not instead of why. How can we help? What more can we done? What more can be done? What else do people need to do this great work for our kids? Representing the Board of Education today and often as a passionate advocate on your behalf, on behalf of public education, and most importantly, on behalf of Brighton Central School District students, is our Board President, Mark Ekonovich. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, it strikes me every year that we do this. Um, I get to follow <laughs> Kevin, and this year particularly eloquent, I will say. And you've touched all the bases. But our kids, talking about all the stuff you teach them <laughs> and how they think. And then certainly the video presentations today, there's not a thing that I can say to anybody here, I think, to add to what we've just been through and listened to and seen. But I would like to focus on just a couple of quick key points. It's tradition that this morning uh, we welcome the Board of Education. I get to do that honor on the behalf of the group. Welcome you all back and thank you for all the work that you do each and every day. And we will never forget that and never forget to do that. Uh, our board, Julene Gilbert, our Vice President, Marv Sachs, Larry Davis, Andrea Costanza, Karen Hatch, and our newest board member, Christina Lee, uh, most of whom were able to be here this morning with us. Um, we are very supportive of everything that you've seen and heard this morning. We are extremely and exceedingly supportive of the work that you all do each and every day. And we think it's particularly wonderful that we were able to bring everybody together today uh, through all facets of how we interact with kids and families. So that message from the board. Uh, it's just fantastic to have everybody in the room. Two quick messages I think that I would like to emphasize from what you've already heard. First of all, just a sincere thank you for your perseverance, your dedication, your service each and every day to the students and families of Brighton. It makes a huge difference. It is why we achieve the way we achieve, and it is why who we are. And families and students, and even my two young adults, happy, healthy, and paying their own bills, successfully educated here as class of 2005 and 2007 talk about teachers that affected their lives all the time so thank you for what you do in that regard the second point of emphasis today the idea of team um, Kevin's remarks detailed uh, very uh, you know clearly the aspects of team but I did want to focus on a very specific point to drive home that's key to who and what we all are you know we're all successful as an organization uh, not because we're all on the same team in any kind of a competition, but because each day we all come together, you mostly all come together, uh, to achieve a common goal through collaboration and working together. You team up to reach out to each individual student and each family at Brighton to make a difference with each of those kids every day. And that's how team works for this organization. So for that devotion, that dedication to the work that we all have in front of us, we thank you, we appreciate it, and all of our best for a healthy and successful new school year. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. We also work with the most incredible children that a community can offer. They're kind, they're bright, creative, they're committed, thoughtful. They're a joy to know and to work with, as you know very, very well. An excellent example of these incredible kids is here to welcome you back today as well. Please join me in welcoming PHS Executive Council President, Ben Levin. Good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin Levy. I'm the BHS Executive Council President, and I would like to welcome you uh, back to the 2018-2019 school year. I'm honored to be speaking here today, and I would like to say that when talking about student experiences in Brighton, 
there's truly no way to describe them and what it means to go to school here. Uh, just absolutely nothing does it justice. That being said, I'd like to share with you some of my experiences at Brighton. I'd love to share them all, but unfortunately I can't because that would take about 11 years. <laughs> um, my first story I'd like to tell, uh, I would, we would have to flash back to the beginning. As a little first grader, um, I was walking across the lunchroom, carrying quite a bit more than what a first grader should eat and could eat, when suddenly my styrofoam tray that I was holding just snapped and all my food fell on the floor. At any other school, I think I would have died from embarrassment. But not here, as the lunchroom attendants rushed over, helped me get everything in order, and got me a new lunch. Thanks to the staff of Council Rock Primary School, instead of embarrassment, I have a story that I laughed about with my friends and I still tell today. This was one of the first positive experiences I had in Brighton, but it surely wasn't the last. Moving through Fres, we truly learned that Brighton was all about equality and providing a safe place for everyone to go to school. We even said every morning, and you can follow along if you'd like, I will not use my hands or words for hurting myself or others. <laughs> yes, I still, remember, I still remember the Purple Hands Pledge, and I will never forget it. I didn't truly appreciate it then, but my years at French Road were some of the best in my life especially that video of all the faculty members dancing with purple gloves on, and our absolutely excellent performance of Dynamite by Tayo Cruz, which is still a good song, by the way. It simply doesn't get any better than that. TCMS, however, is where the fun really started. While ODE provided a fun kickoff to middle school, activity nights raged on throughout all three years, giving us nights we will never forget. I remember the task of driving, dragging my gigantic Barry saxophone down the hallway before holidays and setting up an experiment where someone shoplifted from the school store. I still don't know how we were allowed to do that, but at least that proved that Brighton students, more often than not, do the right thing. Going to such an amazing middle school was an awesome experience, and I'm thankful that TCMS did a good job preparing me for high school in the most important years of my life. Well, BHS brings the most work, it also brings the most fun out of all the Brighton schools. The interesting thing is, to students, BHS is not a school, but a way of life. Something that everything revolves around. Want to play some soccer? Meet at the turf. Want to hang out? Meet at the high school. Want to play, practice for the homecoming pep rally dance? Also meet at the high school. This is a huge part of what it means to go to school here. Brighton has built such a great community that thousands of students are proud to call it home. Brighton faculty, you may not understand the latest meme or why the kids like to play Fortnite so much. <laughs> and Dr. Hall, some kids may never fully understand why your bitmoji is on posters around the school. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're always there, helping to build an amazing school environment, and that means so much. I'm extremely excited for the 2018-2019 school year. Let's make it awesome. Thank you. Benjamin, thank you very much. And if the world could just exist with the Purple Hands Pledge, it'd be great. And it does seem to be the year of the Bitmoji. I think they're great, Tom. Thanks, Ben. I'd also like to uh, take this moment to introduce you to somebody very special. The Brighton Alumni Association is another excellent example of what makes this district like no other. Their accomplishments as individuals and collective commitment to our school is unparalleled. Here to welcome you back from the alumni is Mrs. Mary Jane Link. coming here every year and I just think Kevin is so fabulous and so inspiring. <laughs> I am a member of the class of 1958. That means we had our 60th reunion this year. It was a... <laughs> But, um, and, and your talk made me think that the president of our then called student council and all four of our class officers came back. So we have such a loyal group. The highlight though was the participation of a former BHS graduate, we think 1944, 
and math teacher Jerry Rising, who drove from Buffalo to be with us. At 92, his goal is to be the oldest living Brighton teacher, and he certainly is from our era. <clears throat> the Brighton Schools Alumni Association, BSAA, works to recognize the heritage of Brighton schools, coordinate and support reunion activities, maintain archival materials, and initiate projects that recognize individual and class accomplishments. Our Hall of Fame began in 2006, and since then we have welcomed more than 40 alumni at a wonderful dinner at Oak Hill. I am sure you have seen the display of their pictures across from the gym, an amazing group of people. Our scholarship began in 2007, and this year it will be our 12th. Until this year, students received $1,500 for each of their four years. But because of the generosity of alums, we were able to increase the amount to 2,500 this year for each of them. <laughs> this year's recipient is Dylan Holcomb, and the committee includes, yeah, he's great. The committee includes alumni teachers, Christina Growney, Adam Hiller, and Ben Vick. Please encourage students to apply next spring. We don't have many applicants. Our focus is on school spirit, giving back to Brighton, along with need, and less emphasis on grades, although we do love to see those grades. <laughs> Thanks to the leadership of Bob Lambricks, our original founder, the scholarship fund is now at $350,000. Invested in Vanguard, we believe the fund is now self-sustaining, but we still welcome donations. <laughs> Brighton teachers as alums. At one point, there were 40. Please stand if you are a Brighton alum. We also enjoy working with Mike Pincelli, who is on our board, and we always have a student representative. In 2015, we launched the Pete French Memorial Library Project. Pete was one of our founders from the class of 53. Some updates included the beautiful window by alum Nancy Gong, the courtyard garden. Pete Heinrich, another founder from the class of 55, spearheaded this effort and we are still adding to it. And hopefully the bird problem has been solved. <laughs> I have brochures with me and in the back about our association and we welcome your involvement. Have a wonderful year at school as you always do here at Brighton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary Jane. I think that's so interesting, actually. I just want to point something out. Dylan is certainly a great, great recipient of that award. Um, but interesting to me, too, Dylan was one of several student leaders, certainly a primary student leader, in the walkout this past March. And so it's fascinating to me that uh, people led, certainly by you, Mary Jane, and a committee of, of graduates from many, many different years, including those 60 years ago, are also recognizing this current new generation of leaders that you were working with and that you were producing. And that may traditionally not have been the case where there would have been that type of embracing of student leadership at such a young age. I had the pleasure of watching Dylan present to the Rotary this year. And uh, the Rotary would be, I, I'd say, many contemporaries, Mary Jane, uh, of yours, uh, similar class graduation years, could not have been more excited to witness student leadership and leadership at that level. So you really are now closer to preparing leaders than you have ever been before in terms of them taking a leadership mantle immediately after graduation and in many cases uh, before graduation. So thank you very much for that. Just, I thought something interesting. It is a great morning to also have an opportunity to get to know our newest team members and put a face to a name. So I'm very pleased to begin those introductions this morning to formally introduce you to the Reverend Dr. Marlo Washington to get things kicked off. Reverend Dr. Marlo Washington is joining the district as a diversity consultant. He's going to be working with the Diversity Equity Committee and the Black Student Union here at BHS and will serve as a resource for all families and community members. 
He's the pastor of Seneca United Methodist Church and a former Brighton parent. Many of you may remember Marlo Jr. He earned a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science from St. Francis College, Master of Divinity from the New York Theological Seminary, and a Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Leadership from Northeastern Seminary at Roberts Wesleyan. As if that wasn't enough, and maybe evidence that we should have Marlo's head checked, he's currently a doctoral candidate in the Executive Leadership Program in Higher Ed Administration at St. John Fisher College. Thank you, Marlo, and congratulations to you. Marlo and his wife, Mira. Warm welcome. Uh, Marlo and Mira have two children, Brittany and Marlo the second, as I mentioned, a son-in-law, Willie, and our proud grandparents to Zariah, Willow, and Zuri. So uh, congratulations and again, welcome to Marlo. <laughs> Next up, it's my pleasure to introduce Carolyn Rabideau, our Director of Student Support Services, to continue the introductions. Carolyn? Good morning. This is Chris... Kristen Hee-haw, she says, it's, or excuse me, I did it wrong. Haw he, it's hee-haw backwards. <laughs> ha he, I just came from Nashville, so I'm really confused. <laughs> Kristen haw he, she is our new family navigator. She is the person who is taking over our family support center. It is called Family Navigator. She will be coordinating our clinic at the high school and at the middle school. We have counselors coming in one day a week to TCMS and to the high school from Genesee Mental Health. And she'll be coordinating all of those uh, appointments and work with them. She will also be working uh, at the high school and the middle school as a drug and alcohol counselor one day a week. Kristen grew up in a small town called Vineland, which is about 25 minutes west of Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. She attended Brock University at St. Catharines, Ontario to complete her undergraduate degree in psychology and then moved to British Columbia to complete her master's in counseling psychology at Trinity Western University. This is Kristen's third year with Delphi Rise and will be part of Brighton on Tuesdays and Wednesdays as the family support navigator. Kristen works the other three days at Gates Chiline Middle School. <coughs> Prior to working at Delphi Rise, Kristen worked as a counselor at the Center for Youth. She lives with her husband and her two charming pit bulls in East Arondequoit and is called the Greater Rochester Area her home for the past five years. Prior to coming here, Kristen and her husband lived in Oceanside, California while her husband was serving in the Marine Corps. She enjoys hiking, hanging out with her dogs, traveling, and spending time with her family, especially her five nieces and nephews. She's really excited to be here this year and can't wait to work with the Brighton family. Good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce two new district uh, support staff. First is Charles, affectionately known as Chuck by the B&G team. Uh, Chuck Smith is a grounds equipment operator for the district. He grew up in Brighton and comes to us from Eid Honda as a skilled mechanic. Charles attended Brighton schools where he also played lacrosse. Charles be, uh, brings a youthful enthusiasm to the district with a willingness to learn something new every day. Charles will be a second generation employee for the district following his grandfather who worked in our visual performing arts department. Oh. Welcome Chuck. <laughs> Next is Kelly Wilkin. Kelly is a new administrative assistant supporting both our community education and preschool programs. She will work in the early evenings. In addition to her clerical responsibilities, she looks forward to assisting community education instructors with classroom setup, as well as directing students to their classes. Kelly earned a bachelor's in criminal justice and sociology from Alfred University and a master's in criminal justice administration from University of Cincinnati. In addition to working at Brighton, Kelly is employed full-time as a se se senior, excuse me, probation officer for Monroe County. She enjoys taking our classes and spending time with her family, especially her three-year-old niece. Welcome, Kelly. I would now like to introduce Mr. Matt Tappan, Principal of Council Rock. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. We've got lots of stuff and things happening at Council Rock, apparently, so we'll be looking into the thesauruses that we can possibly look at, but <laughs> welcome back. 
Uh, it is my pleasure to start by introducing Carol Miss Caroline Bucci, who will be a long-term substitute for Nicole Yearly's at second grade this year. Caroline has her Bachelor of Science degree in education with a minor in special education from Valparaiso University and her Master's of Science in Education from Salem State College. She has been a teacher in Mexico for two years, teaching second grade and also taught third grade for two years in Chicago, Illinois, kindergarten for five years in Boston, and kindergarten in Honeyway Falls for two years before staying home to raise her own children. Most recently, she's been a frequent substitute at Council Rock and an after-school Spanish instructor through the Brighton Continuing Education Program. Caroline is happily married with three beautiful children, Isabella, 12, year, 12 years old, and she'll be in seventh grade at TCMS, Giovanni, a 10, 10 years old, a fifth grader at Frez, and Alessandro is seven years old and will be a neighbor to her down in second grade, and she literally lives next door to Council Rock. We are so excited to welcome Caroline to the team at Council Rock. We also welcome Erin Dibble, who will be our new school psychologist. Erin has her Bachelor of Science degree from SUNY Brockport in psychology and her Master's of Science in school psychology from Roberts Wesleyan College. Previously, she was the school psychologist at Quest Elementary School in Hilton, where she has been for the last three and a half years. Erin and her husband, Dan, have two children, Eli, age 12, and Marley, age 8, and her lionhead rabbit named Max, and they live in Hilton, New York. They just sold their house and are in the process of building a new home. So she's got quite a lot going on. We are excited to welcome Erin to Council Rock. <laughs> David Douglas is one of our new night cleaners at Council Rock. He grew up in Rochester, New York, and comes to us from the Fairport School District. David is married with two children. His daughter attended Council Rock, where she had Mrs. Tisa and Mrs. Yearlies. David is an experienced cleaner with a strong work ethic and a great sense of humor. He is a perfect addition to our Council Rock family. <laughs> Catherine Edwards will be joining Council Rock as our newest academic support instructor. She is a formal, former Council Rock student as well. Catherine has a bachelor's degree in early childhood education and elementary education from SUNY Fredonia and is currently working on her master's in literacy at Nazareth College. She is the middle child with one older sister and one younger sister and lives in Rochester with her dog Gatsby and her cat Madeline. She has been a camp counselor at the Sunshine Rotary Camp for the last four years. We are excited to welcome Catherine back to Council Rock in this new and exciting way. <laughs> Maggie Gallagher will join us as our part-time music teacher at Council Rock. Maggie received both her bachelor's and master's degrees from Ithaca College in music performance and music, music education. Before coming to Brighton, she worked at the Binghamton City Schools as an elementary and middle school band and general music teacher for three years, and also at Southern Cayuga Central Schools as an elementary band and general music teacher for three years as well. She and her husband, Ryan, live in Fairport with their six-month-old son, Niall, and their two Siberian cats, Boris and Vladimir. We are excited to welcome her to Council Rock. Ms. Morin Jeffries, I am so excited to welcome Marin back to Council Rock as our assistant principal. Many of you will remember Marin as she taught first and second grade here for several years. For the last two years, she has been the assistant principal at Brooks Hill Elementary School in Fairport. Before this, she taught in Geneseo at the primary level. Marin received her bachelor's degree from Niagara University in elementary education and her master's degree from Boston University in reading and her administrative certi certification from SUNY Brockport. Marin and her husband currently live in Pittsburgh with their children, Ross, who's two and a half, and Callan, who is four months. We are so excited to welcome you back, Ms. Marin. <laughs> Darcy Ormachea will join us as a special educator at Council Rock. Darcy is a proud graduate of Brighton High School and has her bachelor's degree in human development and family studies from Cornell University, a bachelor's degree in elementary and special education from SUNY Geneseo, and her master's in special education from Wheelock College. Most recently, she was the special education coordinator at the Discovery Charter School, and before that, taught second grade special education and was a literacy coach at Kander Elementary School. She and her husband, Louis, have a 12-year-old daughter, Leah Christina, and an eight-year-old son, Matthias, who, and they currently live in Penfield. Darcy's mom was a longtime uh, Council Rock speech pathologist, so we are excited to keep the tradition live in her family and welcome her to Council Rock. Yeah. 
last but certainly not least, Katura Reedhead will join us uh, as our new part-time counselor at Council Rock. Katura has her Bachelor of Science degree from Alfred University in Psychology and her Master's of Science in School Counseling from SUNY Brockport. Previously, she worked at the Lima Primary School as the school counselor and has been there for the last three years. She and her husband, Vincent, and son, Oliver, currently live in Honeyway Falls with their two cats, Emery and Lovey. We are excited to welcome Katura to Council Rock. It is now my pleasure and honor to introduce my colleague, Dr. Allison Rio, principal at French Road. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am happy to introduce some new faculty members to French Road. First up, we have Kirsten Blackburn. Kirsten is joining us at French Road as our school nurse. She came to us from St. Joseph's Hospital. Kirsten attended Lemoyne College for her bachelor's degree in nursing and St. Joseph's College of Nursing for her nursing degree. Kirsten is also a musician who plays the saxophone and has a six month old puppy at home who she loves named Spencer. Welcome Kirsten. We're excited to welcome Claire DeFelice to French Road as a .7 instrumental music teacher. Prior to joining us here in Brighton, Claire worked in the Avon Central School District as the elementary and middle school band director. Claire graduated from Fairport High School and then went on to complete her bachelor's degree from the Crane School of Music at SUNY Potsdam and then her master's in music education from Ithaca College. Claire enjoys gardening, hiking, and camping, especially in the Adirondack Mountains. Welcome to Claire. It's my pleasure to introduce Katie Drake. Katie joins us at French Road as our 1214 special education teacher working with our third, fourth, and fifth grade students. Previously, Katie worked in the Red Creek Central School District as a special education teacher and also in both the Wayne Central School District and at Mary Cariola Children's Center. Katie recently got married to her husband Dalton and is looking forward to moving into a new house soon and counting down the days until they can bring home a new dog. Welcome, Katie. <laughs> We're thrilled to welcome Ashley Ellis to French Road as our behavior specialist for the PATH program. Ashley joins us after spending over 10 years working in the counseling and human services field with her most recent experiences in Newark Central School District and Danville Central, Central School District. Ashley is a graduate of both SUNY Geneseo for her undergraduate degree and SUNY Brockport for her master's in school counseling. In her free time, Ashley enjoys designing jewelry and selling clothes and hanging out at home with her husband and 11-year-old son, Ashton. Welcome, Ashley. Christian George is a night cleaner at Fred's. She grew up in Livonia, New York, and comes to us from Leisure's Restaurant. She's the daughter of William George, who has worked at TCMS for over 30 years. She enjoys music and playing video games. She's a hard worker who loves her new job and the people she works with, and she said that it's the best job she ever had. <laughs> Welcome. And lastly, it's my pleasure to introduce Jennifer Hansen. Jennifer will be working at French Road this year as a lunch monitor. Jennifer attended Long Island University and received a bachelor's degree in early childhood education. Most recently, Jennifer has worked at the Sylvan Learning Center through the Rochester City School District teaching Regents Review classes. Jennifer is a Fres parent to one of our awesome fourth graders, Michael. And this summer, they just came back from visiting the Wright, Brother Mu Wright Brothers Museum in the Outer Banks after reading all about it before they went on their trip together. Welcome, Jennifer. And next, I would like to introduce Mr. Rob Thomas, the principal at 12 Quarters Middle School. Good morning, and welcome back, everybody. I have the pleasure to introduce five people today. Irina Dazur is a new night cleaner at TCMS. She grew up in Simmerfool in the Crimean Peninsula. Irina's mother-in-law, you may know, Maria, was a cleaner at French Road for 37 years. Wow. She enjoys spending time with her husband, nieces, and nephews. She's a fantastic cleaner and a happy and positive addition to our night staff. She, also, she really enjoys being part of the TCMS work family. Welcome, Irina. <laughs> Rob Giles is an eighth grade English teacher from Gasport in Niagara County. He earned his Bachelor of Arts in English Literature from SUNY Geneseo and a Master's of Education in Adolescent English 
from the University of Buffalo. After some long-term substitute positions in the Buffalo area and then in Arantikoit, he taught 7th and 8th grade at Bolivar Richburg, but most recently he was a high school English teacher in Penfield. He and his wife Casey enjoy walking with their dog, reading and traveling, logging recent visits to New York City, the New England states, and Chicago. We learned that a student bit Rob while he was driving the school van for a former district, so he's well prepared for our middle school. <laughs> Welcome, Rob. Meg Goodman will be our behavioral specialist in the PATH program at TCMS. Meg grew up in Brighton and attended Mercy High School and earned her BS in psychology at Loyola University in Chicago and then went on to earn her master's in social work at the University of Illinois in Chicago. Meg was a primary therapist in the child and adolescent partial hospitalization program at Strong and before that she was a CPS social worker in the United Kingdom, Swansea, Wales, where she and her husband Andrew had their first son, Reese, who is now five, and the older brother of two-year-old Juliet. Meg enjoys hanging out with family and friends, working out, and generally being social. Welcome, Meg. <laughs> Robin Newcomer is a French teacher at the middle school and is from Derby, New York. She went to Lakeshore Central Schools, then on to SUNY Fredonia, where she earned her degree in French and secondary education. She continued at Brockport, earning a master's in liberal studies. She taught for two years at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, but has spent the last 20 years teaching French in Newark. Robin and her husband Keith have lived in Brighton for 18 years and have two children, Patrick in fifth grade and Lucille in third grade, both at French Road. Robin likes to run, walk, and cook, and this summer her family went to Cape Cod and jumped off the drawbridge at Martha's Vineyard. So we're gonna keep her away from the windows at the middle school. Welcome, Robin. <laughs> Finally, it's my pleasure to introduce Joe Rare. Joe will be a security guard at TCMS and is coming to us from the Honeyoy School District. Joe is a Marine Corps veteran and did tours in Honduras and Guatemala. He enjoys hiking with his dog, Logan, a pug beetle mix. Welcome, Joe. It's glad to have you aboard. And now, please welcome BHS principal, Dr. Tom Hall. All right, uh, Ben, you can thank um, my colleagues, Dr. Rio and Mr. Tappan, for creating my Bitmoji, because I had no idea what a Bitmoji was, and they did it during a board presentation, uh, I think the budget, this spring. Sorry, guys. And now I can't stop. I can't stop. All right, Roberto Castro. Roberto is one of our new night cleaners at BHS and works Tuesday through Saturday. Roberto grew up in the Bronx in New York City and comes to us from Dynamic Cleaning Company. When not working, Roberto enjoys spending time with his eight daughters and 34 grandkids. Yeah. A lot of cleaning up going on there. Roberto is a hard worker that always arrives at least an hour before his shift starts to see if he can be of help to the day staff. He's excited about being a part of the BHS staff. Welcome, Roberto. <laughs> Lauren Delgaizo. Uh, Lauren will be joining our library team this year. She attended Lycoming College in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, or better known as the home of the Little League World Series. Lauren studied creative writing in school and wrote a young audience fantasy novel last year. In her spare time, she enjoys knitting, but only knows how to make scarves at this point. And we do need a knitting club advisor, I think. Uh, welcome, Lauren. <laughs> Rebecca Geary, we're excited to welcome Rebecca to our science department. Rebecca has taught living environment in the Bloomfield Central School District since 2015 and taught chemistry and AP biology at Eastridge High School prior to that. Rebecca is also a New York State master teacher. Prior to teaching, Rebecca managed a research lab at the U of R where she worked on the central nervous system, researching injuries and how the body repairs those injuries. Rebecca has four kids, including four-year-old twins. Uh, Rebecca runs marathons for fun, loves to travel with her family all over the world, and her next destination is Thailand 2019. She'll be teaching chemistry at BHS this year. Welcome, Rebecca. Damian Laird. Damian is one of our new night cleaners at BHS. He grew up in Rochester and comes to us after working for Wegmans uh, at their corporate warehouse. 
Damien is known to be super organized and meticulous about doing his job well. He has a great eye for detail. In his spare time, he likes to read and spend time with his pompu. He's a great addition to our high school team and we're lucky to have him. Welcome, Damien. Jenna Marcellus. Jenna will be joining our English department this year. Jenna most recently taught in the Livonia Central School District where she's taught a variety of high school English courses as well as a cross-curricular humanities course combining social studies and English. Jenna has a master's degree in literacy and a BA in English from SUNY Geneseo as well as national board certification in adolescent young adult English language arts. Jenna's an avid golfer and a huge Syracuse fan basketball fan. She's also trying to become an Adirondack Mountain High Peak 46er with her fiance and has eight peaks done. Jenna will be teaching English 11 and English 10. Welcome Jenna. <laughs> Jessica Nichols. We're pleased to welcome Jessica to the BHS math department. Jessica comes to us from Fairport High School where she was a special ed teacher the past three years. Jessica is dual certified in both special ed and math, and she taught and co-taught many math classes both in Fairport and Frederick Fredericksburg, Virginia, where she began her teaching career. Jessica received her BA from SUNY Cortland and her master's degree from St. John Fisher, and she had a very unique uh, student teaching experience in Australia. She is the Irondequoit High School varsity cheerleading coach, loves to travel, and spent time in the Adirondacks this past summer. Welcome, Jessica. Kevin Pierce. Kevin will be joining the math department uh, this year. Kevin's a graduate of SUNY Geneseo where he majored in math. While Geneseo, Kevin was active in student government and in acapella scene groups. He student taught at School of the Arts and Huntington Falls Lima High School. Kevin most recently finished last school year as a long-term sub in HFL, teaching upper level classes including AP Calc BC and Honors Pre-Calc. In his free time, Kevin enjoys hiking, reading, playing music, and traveling. Welcome, Kevin. Rachel Rivera. Rachel will be teaching both French and Spanish at BHS this year. Rachel comes to us from East Irondequoit, where she's been teaching French and Spanish at Eastridge High School for the past four years. Before teaching at East Irondequoit, Rachel helped create the foreign language in the elementary school program at East Irondequoit. Rachel's a graduate of Suna Geneseo, where she earned both her bachelor, a bachelor's and master's degrees. Rachel's active in sports and has coached varsity softball for several years. Rachel has two kids, Benny and Rosie, and her hobbies include traveling with her family, running, biking, skiing, and gardening. Welcome, welcome, Rachel. <laughs> Katie Santelli. Katie will be joining our BHS library staff this year. She has a BA in management from Leslie University in Cambridge, Mass, and a Master's of Library Science from the University of Buffalo. She lives in Fairport with her husband, uh, son Eddie, and daughter Mary. And for the last three years, Katie's worked as an extended sub in the Greece District uh, High School. Part of that, she was the assistant director of McGrath Library at Hilbert College and is a certified urban community gardener when she was in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome, Katie. <laughs> Devlin Sprague. Devlin is one of, also one of our new night cleaners at BHS. He grew up in East Rochester and comes to us from the Home Depot. Devlin is also a volunteer fireman. Devlin's references say that he's a great team player that goes above and beyond helping others accomplish daily tasks. Devlin is very excited about being in Brighton. Welcome, Devlin. <laughs> and finally, Jessica Weber. We're happy to welcome Jessica to our science department. Jessica has taught chemistry and general chem at East High School for the past three years. She graduated with her BA in science in chemistry, science in chemistry, and Master of Science in Science Education from the U of R. Jessica recently bought a house on North Whitten Village and has spent her summer, summer traveling to Alaska and tending to her new vegetable gardens. Her hobbies include yoga and skiing. She's a big fan of hockey, the New York Rangers, and football, the Bills. Jessica will teach chemistry and principles of chemistry at BHS. Welcome, Jessica. Back to Dr. McGowan. What a great group of people. So thank you very much for those awesome introductions. And again, welcome to all of our uh, new staff members. So just a brief housekeeping reminder and a thank you. I don't believe uh, that any other superintendent can say what I say at this point every year and really mean it the way that I 
do mean it from the heart. Our collective relationship between, between the district and each of our bargaining units is incredibly important. We are grateful for the ability to work collaboratively, warmly, and in a manner that balances well the needs of our staff with our mutual goals of being professionals focused on kids. Personally, thank you very much to Judy Wagman for being both a tireless advocate for your colleagues, but also for brightening all of the time. Particularly uh, thinking about in the past all the different advocacy efforts that the BTA has made and Judy in leading that around Fight for Brighton and a variety of other efforts. We, we greatly appreciate that. We enjoy a very meaningful collaborative relationship with all of our non-unit staff members. Bargaining units representing teachers, paraprofessionals, tutors, clerical staff, technology staff, buildings and ground staff members, nurses, and administrators. We thank them all for those relationships. And again, it's the how we do the work as a team. Although there may be formal business relationships, they're much more than that. They're a collective partnership. Judy, uh, the BTA president, has asked that I remind all of you that there will be a general meeting of the BTA taking place here right after this program. And Cheryl Becker, president of the Brighton Educational Paraprofessionals Association, has asked that I remind all of those unit members that they will also have a meeting right here at PHS in the lower level of the library, also immediately following this meeting. So sorry, I couldn't resist one more time. Fred Rogers. Just look at that, between him and that child, that look in their eyes. We live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those that see a need, the need, and respond. I consider those people my heroes. You are our heroes. Thank you for seeing the need and always responding, never saying, not my problem. As I've said to you for 10 years now, children are so much better for having spent their days with each and every one of you. You are the magic makers and the dream catchers. The world and all of us in it are better off because of the work that you do. You're heroes in this world and for our children. It will be another great year and it will be because of you. So you are Brighton. You are excellence for all children. Thank you, good luck, and best wishes for a great school year. Thank you.